let's uh, let's get it started, man. I, I promise myself that I want to take my time today. Usually I'm in a rush. I'm into my histrionics and getting animated and stuff. But today, we easy like Sunday morning. All right, that's the only way to be. All right. Uh, WBH Radio host, William Holly. Uh, you're listening to episode 113. And the guest I'm speaking with, if you know, you know. And if you don't, it is my mother, Miss Linda Holly. Welcome, mother. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. I'm nervous, but I'm here. You're here. You're here. My at the end of the year, a lot of shows do like year end wrap ups and recap the year. I've never been into that because I'm looking forward. Amen. But we had ourselves a year this year. <laughs> Absolutely. So I thought it it'd be a little fun to just run through it. So Ma, I'm gonna ask you. For one word and one word only to describe your 2022. Unexpected. 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 And why would you use that word? Because this time last year, I would have never expected all that that transpired this year. And all that that transpired, I'm sure tops on that list, is the loss of my grandparents. Absolutely. Your parents. Yes. We lost Grandpa William Roger Holly on, what was it, April 4th? April 4th. April 4th. And Grandma was how many days after that? May 29th. What was that, about 45 days? Yes. One month, one, and the following month, the other. Back to back. Back to back. Let's go back to April 4th. I woke up that morning and I had a bunch of missed calls. Absolutely. You know, I'm up at the crack of the dawn, military time, and I already had missed calls from both you and my sister, your oldest daughter, Jacqueline. And I'm not even going to lie, my initially I said, somebody's gone. Somebody's gone. I remember you saying that. And, you know, I, I, I started running through my mind, wondering who it could be. And then I, somebody left me a voicemail. I don't know if it was you or Jackie. And they said, Grandpa was gone. Right, correct. And my initial thought was, you know what I'm saying? I'm a soldier. I got to go to war. I start thinking about my grandmother, the impact I have on her, different things. Tell me how you learned. You were actually in the house when he, he passed. Well, grandma called me and told, asked me to call 911. Dad was having a hard time breathing. Grandma called you. You don't, you don't live with us. You were at your place. Okay. Right. She was too nervous to dial 911. But she was successful in dialing my full number. Wow. So I called 911 from my house, which is not too far. And I was there within five minutes. Mm -hmm. Literally five minutes. And he wasn't breathing mm -hmm. at that time. The medics were there. The medics were there. and Working on him? Oh, absolutely. Right. They worked diligently. Mm -hmm. You know, they never stopped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, from the bed to the floor. What was that like watching that? <sighs> Tough. My father was such a clean cut man. Mm -hmm. It was hard to see him laying on the floor. Yeah. And his pajamas and different things. Yeah. Yeah. He was in his underwear. Clean cut man. Ma, I grew up with grandpa my whole life. I never seen the man with his shirt off. Yes. Like he would walk to the shower fully dressed. Yes. And then come out in full pajamas. Absolutely. And, you know, and it wasn't until he kind of got older and his health started to deteriorate. You could, you could tell that he was ill because he didn't shave that day. Right. You know, this is the, or he had his pajamas on at 12 noon. Absolutely. You know, that's how you could tell like, oh, snap, he's not really feeling that well. Because other than that, he got up every morning, he went to work. When he was retired, he got up every morning, put a full uniform on, worked around the house. So I, I'm sure to see him like that. Was a uh, 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 tough grandma was right there too watching. Yes, grandma was right there. They had him on the floor in the bedroom initially. Mm -hmm. Then they dragged him out. I shouldn't say dragged him out. They carried him out to the living room, and he was laying on the floor mm -hmm. in front of us. And they were telling me at that time he still wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, 15 minutes has lapsed and he's still not breathing. So that's a long time. It's a long time. So I asked mom as he was laying there on the living room floor. I said, Mom, come over and see him. Because I felt that was it, because was a long it. time had lapsed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And did she, did she eventually go over? Like, she did go over, but she didn't expect he was gone. Right. Right. So they, were, they still worked on him. They brought him downstairs in our hallway, and they worked on him. Mm-hmm. They pulled him out front in the walkway, and they continued to work on him. To see him out there, and he still had no clothes on. Yeah. That's tough. And then when I got in the ambulance, I was used to riding in the back with them. They was like, get in the front. I was like, mm hmm. They was like, get in the front. Right. And tell me about when you when you finally got the word that he did indeed pass. Well, when they took him out the ambulance, <clears throat> um, and they had the um, I guess the fibrillator on him, I could see he was still wasn't breathing. Mm-hmm. And then when they took him in, in less than five minutes, less. They said, um, we want to pray over the deceased and thanks the medics for helping. And I was standing there by myself behind the curtain. They said, we now pronounce William Holly deceased. Wow. And I was there by myself. Mm. Where does your mind go at that moment? I just went numb and my thoughts went for grandma. Yeah. My thoughts went for grandma because she was continuously calling me on my cell phone. For updates and things, right? Yeah, and I had someone there with her. Tony was there with her, and I kept saying, just tell her there's no reception in the hospital. Please tell her. Right. She's continuing to call three, four, five times. Right. Please let her know that. In the meantime, I called my brother and told him to come. Right. You got to process kind of your own grief, but then you're still trying to take care of the family. That's, that's a tough place to be. It was a tough place. And this loss was kind of unexpected. Totally. As unexpected as it can be for someone who's approaching his 89th birthday. But it was unexpected. There's been times over the last few years that we thought we were closer to the end. Absolutely. Last year. But this time, April 4th was a Monday. The Sunday, we was all upstairs chilling. He had his great grandkids. We was mobbing. Yes, absolutely. So for it to go down like that was was, uh, truly uh, unexpected. Totally unexpected. For those who don't know, how can you or how would you explain how big of a loss that was for our family? Oh, my goodness. Grandpa was the matriarch, patriot, of, patriot, the fam- patriot yeah. of the family. He was the strong force. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he was set in his way and he did things his way, but he was the strong force. Mm-hmm. He still wanted to do things his way. He, he never gave in to his sickness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He still wanted to get up and make breakfast, and he wanted his collard greens a certain way. <laughs> he was the strong force. You know, there's probably some people in my life who are probably uh, surprised to hear this news right now because I never really explained it. Part of it is because that's not really who I am, but another part is I didn't really feel like I could articulate how big a loss mm. this really was. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Grandpa was the foundation for everything. You so know, the family here and there. North Carolina, everywhere. He was truly the patriot of this family, truly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Grandpa been all elementary school, yes. taking me to school. He retired when I was, like, uh, going to kindergarten or so. And his job from that point on was to tend to his family. Absolutely. You know, he would take me to school every day. There, uh, when, I would go, when I went to my 11, I'm like, yo, Grandpa, I want to go to school by myself and stuff. But if it was raining... When I came out of school, his van was there. I'm like, yo, Gramps, appreciate that. I need that one. I ain't had an umbrella today. I appreciate that one, dog. <laughs> yeah, he was faithful. You know what I'm saying? Walking around the house and stuff. And forget the familial ties. Forget the fact that we have the same name, him, William Roger Holly, me, William Bernard Holly. I lost the most honorable mm. man that I know. Mm. Absolutely. The most honorable man that I know. Absolutely. Like, that void is gone. Like, you want to talk about somebody said they're going to do something, he going to do it. He said he going to be somewhere. Absolutely. He going to uh, be there. I'm going to tell the story about, try to e- exemplify how decent of a human he was, mine. You can uh, hopefully follow with some of those stories also. 
we live in the same place, like a three family house. I got my section. They live upstairs. The mail would come and our names are William Holly, different middle names, but our names are William Holly. So sometimes mail would come and it would just say William Holly. And every now and again, he would open a piece that would be mine. Yes. He would be so apologetic. Absolutely. I'm like, Grandpa, relax. It's just a coupon for a, a free all change at Bay Ridge <laughs> Honda. Like, it's relax, yeah. grab it. Yo, Will, I'm sorry. Oh, God, Will. Yes. I, yes. Yo, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. He, didn't, he took that very seriously. Mm -hmm. Very honorable. Was, um, one of the guys from the, we used to work at the post office with him, called after he passed. Mm -hmm. And that is the way he described it. The yeah. most honorable man. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was he was um, amazing. You know, I, I'm even learning more about him in death, mm -hmm. being in his surroundings, things that he told me and what he stood for mm -hmm. that I rolled off that now I can receive it even more. He a wise man, mm -hmm. a wise man. Um, my grandfather is from North Carolina, came up here when he's young, 18, 19, make a different way, ended up working in the post office for however many years, retired. The older I get, you know, I was a I was a challenging young man at times growing up. Yeah. You know, resisted a lot. But again, now that I get here, I see like he was such a example of manhood, mm. even without saying much. Absolutely. Like Grandpa could have retired and built him a ranch mansion in North Carolina, but he wasn't going anywhere without us. That's right. He was all about family. He was all about us, man. I remember one time when I was feeling real sick. It was actually a few months before I had my appendix removed. I think it was the beginning of the end. My stomach was messed up. I stayed in the house for like a week. And uh, this is when I was living with Jackie. He came over there. He was like, what's wrong with you, boy? Yo, Grants, my stomach hurt, man. Like... I've been in the house for weeks. He's like, go to the hospital. I'm like, Grandpa, I ain't going to no hospital. I ain't going to no hospital. I ain't going to no hospital. I'm like, if you want me to go to the hospital, you take me. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, exactly. I'm like, yo, Grandpa, exactly. I'm chilling. I ain't going. No, no, I ain't going, bro. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that, that's, uh, that's the type of dude uh, he was, man. Now comes the part you got to lay him to rest. You know, you got Grandma who is, you know, relying on you to lead the way. Well, what, what, let ahead. me first say that when we, I waited for my brother because I did not want to go back in to tell her. When we you came, waited for your brother to before to, you went back to the house to tell grandma. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. She, she didn't believe us. Wow. She didn't believe us. She's like, "Where is your father?" We like, "Mom, he's gone." Mm -hmm. She was in such disbelief. She she wouldn't handle it. She she just she just like. After 65 years of marriage, she just zoned out. Yeah. She don't know a life without him. She, she didn't know life without him. When I told her we had to move forward with planning the funeral, she said, I'm not doing this. Wow. I'm not doing this. So it, it was a rough journey. And then when it finally hit her a few hours later, the nonstop tears that... Yeah. None, that a void that none of us could fill. Oh, yeah. None of us could fill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. None of us could fill. And honestly, after I learned that it, it was him that passed, that's where my thoughts went. And I'm going to be frank. I'm like, oh, the clock is starting on my grandmother. Absolutely. Because we always hear these things about, you know, once one of them go, like elderly, the second one goes shortly after Forget whatever ailment it is. It's exactly. a broken heart. It's a broken heart. It's a broken heart. It's grief to another level. And Ma, after we buried Grandpa, didn't she... She was in the hospital, what, the day after? The day after. The very day after. So, Grandpa passed how long before the funerals? Four or five days? Like, um, he passed one Monday. The following Monday was the funeral. She went into the hospital the Tuesday. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I definitely want to share when you talk about Grandpa and his greatness. I want to share that I actually named you after him because of he was such a phenomenal man. Why would you do a thing like that? <laughs> Tell me about that decision, Ma. I was going to ask you that a little bit later. Oh, let's go. Okay, because when I was pregnant with you, I would take the train. I would not get a seat. 
And one time this man was actually pushing and shoved me and almost knocked me down. And I came home and told him. He said the very next day, he said, you won't take the train again as long as you're carrying, you know, the baby, which was you. And um, he gave me his car. Wow. And that was the beginning of him having leg problems. But he would walk to the eight bus, which is down the block, but it was a challenge for him. Mm -hmm. And take that two-hour ride to the Brooklyn VA. So you could have the car? So I can have the car. So the God... My, my mother didn't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> and to honor him, I named you after him. What did he think? He probably didn't say much when you said, yo, I'm going to name my son after you. He, didn't, he, was, he, just, he was amazed. He, was, he didn't say a whole lot, but he was just like, thank you. He was a man of few words. Mom was like, yeah, 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 that's what you should do. <laughs> um, he, was, he was honored. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for checking out the clip of the episode with me and my mother. Uh, her and I talked for about two hours. As you could imagine, the topics were very personal. And I'm still sifting through all of the clips, seeing exactly what I feel comfortable airing. So there will be more. Uh, and the only way to watch it is to become a member of the WBH Radio YouTube channel. You can click the link down below or the one right above my head. Uh, how it works with a monthly investment, you'll have access to exclusive videos. Uh, you can uh, cancel that membership at any time. Yep. That's it, man. Thanks for tuning in, y'all.